um, as the morning draws to a close, we've already heard about um, sort of wonderful benefits. We've in been introduced to the passive house standard. Uh, we've been introduced to the, the comfort benefits and um, th how the users are sort of seeing that it's actually a, a really workable and usable building. Uh, we've also seen that it's a suitable building for the UK climate. What we're now talking about is what we see is, is perhaps the, the hurdle or, or perhaps the thing which everyone always asks when you first talk about passive house. You say, okay, so how much extra does it cost? What, you know, how can we, how can we compare this to what we're already building? So uh, we thought we'd have a little bit of fun uh, and present a cost study with a difference. Yes, we're, we're going to um, go for world record and build a couple of houses for you in 10 minutes. <laughs> Okay, so um, the houses are going to look a little bit like this one. These are the Larch and Lime House in Ebervale, um, and more specifically the Lime House, which is um, the basis um, for this uh, study. We should say that this has been certified to the Passive House Standard. Uh, we also have a sort of Code 5 and Code 6, but that's you know, not where we're focusing. Um, the Lime House is um, going to be um, basically built um, in this study. We're going to compare it with a Code 3 house. Um, the one that I'm going to build, and of course my house is going to cost a lot less than yours. Well, we'll see about so, that. Uh, <laughs> so you better get cracking. So we've only got we, nine minutes left. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah. We've, <laughs> we've been messing around. So we have uh, the former steelworks site here in Ebervale. It's uh, obviously it's quite a quite an extreme microclimate. It's a bit of mist descending there. Um, so we're going to actually take instead um, an average UK climate. We've used GB Manchester for this. Um, just to get a specification which is more suitable to a kind of a, an average or the more mild UK climate. So here we have the Code 3 house. I've um, excavated my foundation, filled my concrete. Oh, the, sorry, uh, hang on, Richard. Well, let's, let's, just, let's just talk about, the, introduce the house first. I was going to say that we've, uh, we've, we've got the, the Code 3 house here. Um, we've got the passive house here. The passive house obviously shown in green, a little bit of subliminal messaging there. Um, and the interior of the two houses is the same. We have the same internal volume, the same fixtures, the same fittings. Everything is the same. Everything that changes, everything that we're going to be talking about, is outside of this black square. So the, the external walls, I mean, you can already see that there's a couple of differences there with the roof truss. This is what we're going to be focusing on. So uh, we're going to be going through it element by element as per the RICS standard. With, and this is where uh, Richard is keen to be getting on with his uh, traditional house. So let's go. So we're putting foundations in and the, and the brickwork and blockwork cavity walls um, and, uh, and we get ready with the, the underfloor ventilation and, uh, and there we go. So whereas I am going with a, a slab straight on the ground, we've got insulated slab underneath um, and basically all I need to do is um, insulate around the edge of the perimeter and lay an aerated concrete block ready to take the sole plate. So you can see that happening there, very nice. Um, and yeah, the cost of that my is... My house is only has cost £3,501 so far. And um, mine has taken £1,160. Uh, so I'm actually in the lead at the moment. I'll soon catch up. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so moving on to the, uh, the ground floor construction. Um, Richard, sorry? Yes, yeah, so all I've got to do is put down my uh, precast beam and block house floor. Um, and, uh, and then over to you, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to um, excavate, as I said, just to um, ready for my concrete slab. Um, I've basically got a sand blinding layer, I've got a reinforced uh, concrete raft, um, and I just need to tape um, and put it all together for the damp proof membrane. Hang on, wh why have you got weed killer? Well, that's to stop the weeds growing in my underfloor ventilation. Ah. Okay. Well, uh, it let's helps cool the house down. Let's so, let's yeah. leave leave that one there. Okay. So uh, we've got the uh, the ground floor construction here. We'll just see it coming in. Got the slab, and we've got the screed with the insulation and your uh, your weed cavity. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's go on for that one. So uh, the cost for that one, my one's cost six thousand two hundred and thirty-three. Uh, it's taken me seven days. And mine's only cost me three thousand two hundred and nine pounds, and taken me three days. Ah. So, uh, okay, well, let, you know, let's move on. Let's see where we can catch up some. <laughs> okay, so we've got the, the two frames here. Um, what, what have you got for yours? My, I've got an open panel prefabricated frame. Um, so it doesn't have any insulation in it yet because we'll, we'll fit that later in the external walls. Okay, well, whereas my one is, uh, is quite a, a nice a new uh, sort of off-site construction method. Uh, we've got uh, the sort of pre-insulated um, frames, 140 mil stud, exactly the same thickness, um, but it's been uh, fitted in the factory uh, with insulation, with the um, internal 18mm uh, OSB and the 9mm panel vent. Um, so when this comes on site, it's all ready to go. 
Uh, one problem, you see the special timber truss rafters, we want to uh, eliminate the thermal bridge around our edge, so we've actually had to create quite, a, um, quite an additional structure there. But anyway, you can see these coming up there. That's quite nice, the uh, frame dropping in. The building regs house, we see the same, but with no insulation. Okay, so the cost of that, my one is 14,600, um, and it's taken me 10 days. And my frame is a bit cheaper, 13,864. I reckon I can put up in mine up in 10 days as well. So. Yeah, all right, fine. So just to highlight, we've got the, the moment, we're actually quite close. We've got 20,574 for the building regs and 21,994 for the passive house. Uh, 23 days and 19 days, respectively. Okay, so upper floor. Um, this is a very quick one. Um, all we need to add in is the cost for the uh, insulation between the floor voids. So that's 100 mil, and that's uh, one day, 361 pounds. Same Moving on to the roof. Houses. Yeah, the same for yep. both houses. Uh, the roof's covered in concrete plane tiles, um, 150 thick insulation quilt, new PVC rainwater goods, and uh, painted timber fascias and ventilation. Um, as you can see, my one is, is actually slightly higher because obviously I've accounted for the extra insulation, which is three layers of uh, breathable uh, sort of rock wall insulation, 420 millimeters. Uh, we've got 18 mil OSB underneath. Uh, and we have the same rainwater goods and the fascia strip. Okay, so you can just see the difference there. So you see the extra, this is, this is why it kind of makes sense now that you need the extra insulation there. Okay, so the roof is 5,212, um, and that's taken five days. And mine's a bit cheaper, 4,424, four days. Good stuff, okay, staircase, uh, very quick, let's skip over that one, that's about uh, 524 pounds. It's exactly the same in both houses, move on. Okay, so the external walls. Richard, what have you got? Well, obviously I've got a timber frame without any insulation in, so I've got to put my insulation in that. Um, and then we're cladding it with um, 80 mil US OSB board and vapor barrier. And then on the outside, we've got the half brick thick um, cav uh, facing brick skin um, with a 50 mil cavity. Okay, whereas I'm going for a nice open breathable fabric, uh, we still have our uh, insulated uh, frame which has come on site. On the inside of that, we have a nice sort of stiker flex. Um, it's a kind of wood wall with um, sort of a bit of sheep's wool in there as well. It's, it's kind of like a nice um, breathable, and it's good for the guys on site to handle as well. On the outside, uh, we have a wood wall board and a lime render, so all the vapor can go inside and out, and um, we think that's good. But uh, do you think there's going to be a cost premium for the lime render? Well, there definitely is, yes. This breathable construction will cost us a bit more. Um, we could do without it in Passive House, or are you saying we have to have the breathable construction? Well, I don't know, that's not for me to say, but that's, right. that's what we think. Okay, external walls. So you can see here the, uh, the masonry um, 